Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Red Lessons. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Today I have two of my closest friends joining me. This here is... Carlos from Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. And to my left we have... Only a bar with scent menu. And today we're going to try to give a somewhat comprehensive video on kind of like a house overview on the house of Thamine London. So stay tuned. a house that I recently discovered maybe about a month ago or so and there was a brand representative that actually came to Oswald and we took the trip out mm -hmm. there on separate days of yes. course mm -hmm. and it was due to the generosity of Oswald and I pointed at Olya because she works at Oswald yes. uh, <laughs> that I had a chance to discover this line and there are some really really cool fragrances in there and so we do have full bottles on hand so we can kind of spray them and smell them and assess them and whatever uh, but if you are interested in at least acquiring samples or if one of these speaks to your interests and you think you want to commit to a full bottle I will be leaving links down below you can purchase these at Oswald so uh, what are some things that we know about this house well, the price range is from 150 to 285 is the high tier. Okay. They have one high tier collection called the... Sovereign Collection. Sovereign Collection, That's which right. has to do with royalty, Imperial Crown, and uh, which Scepter. Which we both own. Yes. Yeah, you lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was quite my favorite because it has like a lot of spicy nuances, we, we it's resinous. <laughs> And so it was like, it's so cold even today. And so I was like, you know what? I have to pick that one up. And so, um, but truth be told, there are a lot of other fragrances that are not in that collection mm -hmm. that are still really, yes. really good. And some very affordably priced, you'll be surprised to know, like Green Pearl. Yeah, instance. right at the end. Mm -hmm. This is actually the treasure collection. There's also a baby collection, which I think has about three or four cents. Yeah. And then there's the um, hair mist. So almost every single one, not all fragrances, but a bunch of them have the hair mist. Thing. I gotta pick up some of those really cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for your beard. <laughs> so the company has been around since 2013. The name Thamin, it's an Arabic word, it means precious. And all of these are kind of inspired by like treasures or gemstones or stuff like that. And so a uh, really cool house. They do have 20 fragrances in their lineup. So that's pretty impressive. They've been pretty hard at work for the past few years. So I suppose we'll kind of do this We'll start it on your side and we'll work our way to the right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the green pearl is actually the one that um, it's priced at 150 so it seems to be the most affordable out of all of them, even though I think, honestly, the price point is pretty good. We're looking at 210 for the entire collection and jumping to 285 for the Sovereign collection that you guys okay. have. Um, the green pearl is kind of, um, well, I sprayed them all just ahead of time. I'm very prepared. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. It has um, a little bit of spiciness, a apple. little bit of the apple. I love the mm. green apple. I'm a big fan of green apple note. I think it always adds this kind of sourness, almost like the, you know when you're about to bite into a green apple and you know it's yeah. going to be like sour and juicy? That's kind of how I feel. But to me, this has a little bit of that kind of, um, mm, a little bit of a designer almost. Yeah, uh, to I would agree. It which um, yeah. I feel like makes it really easily digestible for people who are not into niche and are coming from designer side into the niche. You know, I, I asked a few of my friends for their It opinion. definitely has a relatable DNA profile for designer type of fragrances, but mm -hmm. just a notch better, of course. Right, exactly. Yeah, I can see what you mean, yeah, definitely. So for me, whenever I smell it, and I first smelled it about a month ago, it kind of has like a Silver Mountain water vibe almost, mm -hmm with like a tart green apple up on top. So this one, I can see what you mean when you say designer. I do think it's quite commercial and mainstream. Mm. And it's something that, you know, like for somebody walking into Oswald's, presumably for the first time, and that's their first experience they've ever yeah. had in a niche boutique, and they're not used to the imperial crowns of the world, like mm -hmm. that might be one that you recommend them. Exactly, it's just like to smooth them into the journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for but, sure. But um, it's a really good call on Silver Mountain Water because that, that creamy, freshness that, that's underneath it all is definitely, that's funny, I used to have a bottle of that and I ran out of it and I never restocked. <laughs> yeah, it's so, a good one. Yeah. All right, cool. All Let's right. move on. What do we have next? Then we have carved oud. Ah, okay. So, um, yep, I remember this one. Yes. Sure. Is, Would you like to smell? I remember, yeah, this has a very strong resemblance, in my opinion, to a uh, Oud Wood by Tom Ford Private Plan. Mm -hmm. And some clients have mentioned that. You know, projection-wise, um, this on me got a lot creamier after a while. So oh, as I was wearing it on the skin, 
after about two hours, I felt like that creaminess, you know, but then again, I turn a lot of scents creamy. So I'm not saying that this would happen to everybody, mm. but that was my experience with it. So the next one is okay. The Hope. Okay, cool. So what are the notes for this one, Olya? Okay, pulling on my cheat sheet right now. Uh, well, first of all, I'm gonna mention that it's inspired by one of the largest diamonds in the world. That's called uh, Hope. Okay. And the notes are cardamom, frankincense, clove, Ceylon, cinnamon, bark, pink, pink pepper, immortal flower, patchouli, white cedar, nagarmatha, labdanum, musk, vetiver, and olibanum. Mm. So this is one that, it spoke to me a little bit when I tried it in store about a month ago. And I think the reason for that is because it has a lot of those spices. Mm -hmm. But as much as it does contain spices, I don't think it's that heavy. Like, I don't see myself wearing this one in the dead of winter. Like, yeah. I think this is one that could be pulled off in the hotter weather. So it's a bit of like, it's a bit of a paradox in that sense. It's interesting because you're looking at the ingredients and, you know, you have pretty heavy um, hitters in the base. You have Nagramatha, you have the Labdanum, um, Olabanum, and usually they bring a lot of strength and smokiness yeah. to the scents. But here, I feel like there's still a little bit of that transparency, which exactly bringing back to what you said, I think makes it kind of more wearable maybe yeah. throughout the year if you're into that kind of smoky base. For me, that smells spicier more so than resinous. It's no. true. Yeah. It's totally true. It opens up sp uh, spicy and incense and then kind of gains its strength as it gets to the base. But there's still a little bit of a transparency mm -hmm. through it, which I think uh, makes it pretty versatile. Okay, so the next one in this video is going to be Patiala. And... It's their latest. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So, Olya, you have the most experience with this one. So, what do you what do you think of when you smell this one? I love it, and I love it, and I love it once again. I think, well, first of all, it was inspired by this um, really famous um, Indian necklace, and it kept disappearing and appearing, so there's all this mystery around it. But to me, it's this really lush, woodsy, musky fragrance with a lot of florals, but I think mm -hmm. it actually pretty um, unisex. So a lot of florals could be very feminine. This is not one of those. I think this can easily be worn by a man or a woman. And There's definitely rose in there, I think. There's citrus, aldehyde, orange flower, rose, moss, amber, and musk. To me, the, the rose and the orange flower jumps, and then the amber and musk. I think um, dominate for me and especially on my skin but it is so beautiful mm -hmm. I've been wearing it out and about um, and I love it it cool. just like takes over the room yeah you know, so I'm a really big fan of this one what do you guys think yeah I also pick up on the floral components of it mm -hmm. I think that as far as the florals are concerned it's kind of like a clean floral scent mm -hmm. it's not heady or animalic or anything like that and I also do pick up on the rose but mm -hmm. I think that that freshness from the orange blossom really cleans it up yeah. And so I'm really interested in that one. But you know me personally, I'm a fan of like the darker, more resinous yeah. ones. Yeah. And so I'm sure we'll find something you else play with dark For me, that one seems to be a nod to kind of like classic fragrances, mm -hmm. more so than the rest of the line. Yeah. It's got a little kind of vintage quality about it. Yeah, it's interesting. That base of like the moss, amber, and musk is what I think starts um, taking over after about two hours on mm -hmm. the skin. And yeah, it's totally going into a little bit of that classic direction for sure which I love my classics. So. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> the next one on this list is called Amber Room. And I guess I'm given to understand that this is an amber-based scent. Yes. Would I be correct in saying that? <laughs> okay, cool. So I wasn't actually sure whether, I went wow. on the website, I wasn't able to find, it just said that, in, you know, Amber Room, and it talks about the beauty of the amber, but in Russia, in St. Petersburg, and the Winter Palace, or Hermitage, I have to double check on that, but it's, um, it was, the entire room made out of amber and then pieces of it were stolen and then they had to recover them throughout the years but it is magnificent imagine the entire room with furniture made out of amber so that kind of makes me feel um real maybe because it just sparks really good memories for me that's awesome but um it's spices cinnamon cedar wood and um golden amber that makes sense, because I was going to say there's like a sharpness in there. Yeah, the cedar wood comes across to me. That was one of my runner-ups before I ultimately chose Imperial Crown. It's like a creamy, woody fragrance on my skin, and I really, really dug that one a lot. Yeah, you know, funny enough, I 
was actually drawn to a lot of the more inexpensive ones in the collection. Mm -hmm. So I chose Imperial Crown just like mm -hmm. you did, but Amber Room was a very, like, it was a follow-up. Cool. And I also really like Green Pearl, but Amber Room is gorgeous. I yeah, love I it. The really, really like that too. Yeah. It's just because you, when whenever you think amber, you just think of like a combination of different resins. Yeah. And so you rarely think about spices accenting those resins. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of the ones that we know and love, like mm -hmm. Amber Absolute or Alambar, uh, they don't really uh, go in a very beauty. spicy direction, right? Oh, but this one, or Ambre Nui. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> you are right. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, nice <laughs> All right, so now we're on to the last two, if you care to do the honors. Sure, the next one up is called Moon of Baroda. What are the notes for this one? Um, well, it was inspired by the canary yellow 24 karat diamond discovered in Baroda, India. This was the inspiration for it. It's a very diverse olfactory profile. Yeah. And so it seems to go in many different directions down many different paths. And so there are times when I'm like, oh, this is noticeably woodsy. And then there are times when I pick up on a little bit of like a spicy profile. And so I don't want to say that it's jumbled up, but there's a complexity to it that I really, really enjoy. And I think that if you are a connoisseur, this is one that you'll spend a lot of mm -hmm. time smelling. It's like, what am I actually smelling in this one? Some of them are rather simplistic. Like I keep going back to Green Pearl, but it's such a wonderful scent in its simplicity. Mm -hmm. And then there are some like Region Leather or like Moon of Baroda that is like, wow, there's a lot to discover here. And so that's one of the things that I really like about them. I really like this one because, um, and I completely agree with everything you said, you can't quite pick out any of the ingredients. It's just so well blended that just when you think you finally caught one ingredient, mm -hmm. it slips away from you and then there's a really interesting cocktail of the rest. Yeah. And I think this is very masculine, you know, so to me this is not exactly a feminine direction, even though some women who like that masculine uh, appeal may enjoy this but i think above all this is very cozy i don't know why but to me this is like there's a warmth to it cozy up to yeah yeah it's warm and it's abstract mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it has a different kind of has like different nuances and rides and and weaves mm -hmm. it changes yeah it really changes a lot and you know i really love coriander as a note and i'm pretty sure this wasn't here right i'm not this okay yeah i was right. yeah and I love that note. I cook with it all the time, and I just really like the way in this particular scent it just kind of opens up in the, in the beginning. So to me, I'm actually a really nice, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of this one. Awesome. Nice Moon of Baroda. <laughs> and finally, we have Regent Leather. It's a beautiful leather fragrance. I like it a lot. It was definitely one of the ones that I loved and remembered the most from the whole collection. Mm -hmm. And this came oh so close, but this is a great leather fragrance, is what it is. This was actually inspired um, by Rolls Royce. It was so done, good. It yeah, was done so with good. in collaboration with the Rolls Royce Enthusiast Club. So is this remind you of Rolls Royce? The inside of a. I own a couple of Rolls Royces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it reminds me of the day I bought one. Yeah, <laughs> it smells like the interior of a luxury car. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. Um, I used to work with cars. I actually used to work with a lot of different exotic cars and racing, now. and um, and I wow. think this is this is definitely takes you into exactly that luxurious you know car interior. The notes on that are lemon, jasmine, cedar, vanilla, musk, and latinum. Mm. Wow, that's a good one. If you like it's leathers, you will really love this good. one. It's it's a well done leather for sure. And it's a different leather. Like we've seen so many leathers on the market. God knows I own a lot of them, and I'm sure you guys own even more. <laughs> but this well, is a I different one. Well, I think when you think of uh, leather scents, um, I know Clive Christian has a really popular leather. Mm -hmm. Of course, Tuscan leather by Tom Ford. Yes. You also have um, the one that smells like an Aston Martin. <gasps> We've reviewed it. My favorite, it. Pure, Distance Pure, Pure Distance M. Pure Distance M. Okay, uh -huh. right. I'm stashing some large amounts of it. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> this is right up there with all those other leather scents that we just mentioned. Yeah. Like the authenticity mm -hmm. of it, but like that vanilla adds that nice, sweet, decadent gourmand touch to it. My goodness. It's really good. It's so good. I love this one. So, if you guys had to pick a favorite <laughs> from the collection. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you my head because <laughs> this one, like, everybody you know, like, came you. alive here. Yeah. It's, it was a good one. There's a reason we started on that end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Method to the madness. Of what we reviewed here today, 
I really like Regent Leather and <laughs> these two are my favorites. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say uh, probably Regent Leather and Amber Room, uh, but Green Pearl is gonna be up there too. Green Pearl is just so much fun to wear. Yeah? Yeah, it's an easy reach. I agree with you because for me it would be Green Pearl and it would be Patiala. And then, of course, I would like to get a ride home Rolls Royce at the end. Where in Patiala? <laughs> <Why not? Yeah. laughs> no, that is awesome. So, I, I do think that this is a really, really cool house. Uh, there's a lot of variety in here. There's a little bit for everybody. So, if any of these scents kind of piqued your curiosity, definitely check it out. See what kind of research you can do online. I know Oswald's does have samples available. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. none of us ever recommend blind buy. Sample it for yourself. You can see that there's definitely a lot of really great uh, quality uh, in these fragrances. So another thing that I want to mention is that both of these are YouTubers. Um, you might have seen them on my channel before. I'm going to link their channels down below. So definitely give them a subscription. I'm sure they would appreciate it. Uh, do we have, you're welcome. Do we have any concluding thoughts? I love the line. It took me a little bit of time to kind of warm up to it and to really wear all the scents, but now I am a fan. And there is actually more to the line, but um, there's more feminine ones, so we concentrated more on kind of the masculine. masculine and slightly more unisex ones, but there is a few others that we didn't mention. So the line is actually, there's 20 of them um, from that were launched from 2013. So I do apologize to my four female subscribers. Uh, maybe we'll feature them. Maybe we'll feature them Steven. in a future video. One of them is my mom. All right. Thanks, mom. Yeah. I think I actually have more girl subscribers. <laughs> I've been seeing some more girls pop up on my channel, so That's hopefully awesome. they'll go and, and check yours out and cool. subscribe. I've so. lately been seeing more women being active on my channel. Awesome. But the long running number was like 93% male and 7% female. Yeah. That's interesting. It was 90 male. Yeah. That's interesting that boys are into fragrances apparently more than girls. But hey, <laughs> who knew? <laughs> but all in all, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you are new to this channel and you did take something of value, definitely make sure to subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button in the corner. This way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Also, make sure to subscribe to these people as well. Thank you for Thank watching. You. We love you guys and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.